turn it in a different way than I'm looking. Well, I guess there's nowhere but to start from the beginning. I guess it's been 18 months ago, May of 2018, when I checked myself into the ER at Anmed Cancer. I mean at uh, Anmed at Anderson. Um, I had been going to my personal physician, my primary care, who had been diagnosing me with a ongoing tonsillitis infection of some sort. And of course, he never looked at my throat, in my throat, felt my throat check my left nodes or did any of that. So I kept feeling something growing in the back of my throat and um, it got to where it was hard to eat, hard to swallow. It was affecting my voice. I couldn't talk very well. And so I finally just went to the ER and checked myself in and told them there was something wrong and I wanted to find out. And a day later, they did. 24 hours later, I was I was actually admitted two hours after they'd ran blood tests and sent me down for an, uh, an X-ray, a chest X-ray. Well, actually, I brought the chest uh, X-ray machine in to my room at the ER. And then two hours later, they already had a room for me and admitted me. And um, of course, no one's telling me anything. Uh, because they don't know for sure. They just see something and they're not telling me what. Um, I'm already thinking the worst because I can already put my finger in my mouth and touch something in the back of my throat and feel it back there. So I know something's not right and it, it, it's not going to be good. Now, knowing that and hearing it are two different things. I went in on a Friday afternoon. They didn't diagnose me until, or I didn't get my actual final diagnosis until Sunday. Um, they had an oncologist come in, Dr. Jay Nyack uh, from the NMED Cancer Center. And he came in and just flat out told me it's cancer. It's not curable, but treatable but also there is no established treatment for my cancer. He said it was a top, uh, it was a, um, sorry. He said it was a type of lymphoma that they thought were, was plasmablastic lymphoma, but they weren't sure. And they were sent samples off to be tested at the Levine Cancer Center in Charlotte and at John Hopkins University. And of course, it wasn't just a few hours. Apparently it was, I don't know what kind of test it was, but it didn't take a long to run them. The next day on Monday, it came back confirmed. It was plasma blasting lymphoma. I said, I've never heard of that. And my oncologist said, he's, net. he's heard of it, but nobody's ever seen it. He said, most oncologists, haven't heard of it because it's so rare. There's less than 100 cases a year worldwide of that cancer. And it normally affects people who are HIV positive. And of course, I was tested several times and I HIV negative. And I am not immune compromised. So, and that is the other factor because of being HIV positive, you are immune compromised and that is usually people with a cancer attacks. So I have recently found out that not only was I diagnosed in May of 2018, there was another person diagnosed January of 2019. Dr. Dorster was his doctor. And all I know is that he was 10 to 15 years older than me and never made it to his first treatment. Um, January 2nd of this year, when I went for my uh, blood work and my immunization shots, I found out that there is another case diagnosed from Anderson. 
the who is he is currently going through chemo at St. Francis and he has my cancer and he is about 10 years older than me. Um, to say having one case in this area of my cancer is rare considering how rare it is, but to have three and so far I'm the only one who has made it through treatment. Um, and they're using my treatment on the person who is being treated now. And I, I pray for the guy because he is really, I, I don't envy what he is going to go through. Um, if I had been told the honest truth of what I was looking at, I have to admit now I wouldn't have done it. Um, I would have preferred to have enjoyed what life I had left, which when I was told I was, when the cancer was found, it had went on for so long because of my primary care physician misdiagnosing that I was already stage four. I had a tumor on my bottom and right lung, a large tumor the size of your hand around my liver, and both tumors had grown together through my diaphragm and had joined together as well as cancer in my left nose in my neck and the tumor in my throat. And I was told I had, because I asked when I got the final diagnosis, well, you know, how long do I got? And it was flat two months at best. Um, I unless someone has experienced that there's no way you can describe being told you're going to die i mean nothing prepares you for that i mean even now i still can't talk about it but they told they were going to do it. I was told they were going to do an experimental chemotherapy on me. And my oncologist was honest and he told me, um, you know, either the chemo, either the cancer is going to kill you or the chemo will. He said, and I know there's two other people, one other person for sure that went through a similar, well, actually to Chris and Kevin. And there are two more kins that have my cancer who went through the epoch chemotherapy and that chemotherapy is something i don't worry i don't wish it on my worst enemy it is basically poison it will burn your skin if it touches you i mean when the nurses come to put the stuff into your iv and they're wearing hazmat suits Pretty well tells you this stuff can't be good. And they give me a spill kit because they give me a pump to wear with the bag of the chemo because I have to wear it five days in a row, have the bag changed every 24 hours. And it basically plays chicken with the cancer. It's either going to kill the cancer or it's going to kill the body it's in. And if you make it through both of that, I was told I had a good chance shot at surviving cancer. After the third treatment, it did go into remission. And that was nothing short of a miracle because when they found did the CT scan in August after I went through three rounds, I should have already been dead. Um, but I was still there and they couldn't find any sign of the cancer. It was gone. The tumors were no longer active. Um, my lymph nodes and the tumor in my throat were gone. They were clear. Um, to say it's nothing short of a miracle because that is exactly what my oncologist said. He says, don't thank me, thank God, because God has a reason for keeping you here, apparently, because by all accounts, this shouldn't have worked. 
the best any patient had done so far with this cancer was 12 months, 12 to 15 months, even with treatment. So currently, 18 months, I guess I'm doing good. I have two other friends, Kevin and Chris, who are six years and five years. So I have that to look forward to. I keep cheering them on because the longer they go, the longer I know I got. This cancer is notorious for reoccurrence once treatment is stopped, but so far it hasn't. And I'm told the longer it doesn't come back, the better chance I have at survival. Even with that, I'm told the best because I was stage four when it found it. And so much damage has been done between the chemo and the cancer. I have 10 more years. Once again, everyone knows you're going to die, but you don't know when, you don't know how. But to know how much time you have about. It makes you want to go out and do things you haven't done, but then you also are paralyzed because you're frightened of it coming back. And it's, I thought the fight with the cancer was going to be the hardest. And as I have found out as other cancer survivors have, is that the fight is just beginning once you beat the cancer, because then you live with that fear of it coming back. Then you deal with PTSD from what you went through. Then you deal with the survivor's guilt of why you survived and they didn't. Why me? Why not them? I've lost Greg Page. I've lost my childhood friend, Thomas Gant. I have lost my stem cell, stem cell transplant a partner, Diane, who didn't make it six months post stem cell. Thomas only made it two months from his diagnosis before he was gone. His last message to me was that he was going to call me because he got some good news and he was going to share it with me. And then I didn't hear back. And then I knew something was wrong. And to see Greg go through what he went through, seeing him look the way I looked in some of my videos, how bad I looked like I was already dead. I, it's rough dealing with that. You also find out that when you get cancer, you find out who your real family and friends are. Cause nothing scares people more than death and they will run from it. I have been abandoned by so many People who I thought I could depend on, who I thought were my friends, and I thought were my family. I won't mention names because I don't have to because there's people on here that already know who they are. I, I found out who my true friends are, though, and my true family. And I so appreciate all of you because I... Between my survivors group, Chris, Kevin, Liz, and Ken, and all those, the small group that there are of us in that Facebook group that have this cancer, all of you that have supported me through this, I would not have made it because there were so, so many times I want to give up. cannot explain the pain, the sickness, the nausea, the vomiting, the diarrhea, the weeks, 
months that I don't remember now that I can't, I don't remember my birthday last year. I just not there. I don't remember it. It's gone. I still have problems with memory. That is the thing they didn't tell me about this treatment was what it was going to do to my body and my mind. I have severe nerve damage. My hands, my feet, all over my body. Um, granted, I am happy to be the same size I was in high school. I would have preferred it to do a different way. trying to make a joke but that's the part they left out they didn't tell me what this was going to do they didn't tell me what the stem cell transplant was going to do to me yes it's nice to have a new immune system but I didn't know the other damage it was going to do because now because of the stem cell transplant I have to worry about contracting a different type of cancer bone marrow cancer that's why they check my blood now every six months. Looking for the markers that will show if I come down with bone cancer. Because that is a side effect of the stem cell. It's nice to have a new immune system, but I would prefer not to have another cancer. So now I have to, I have that in the back of my mind. Well, if this cancer doesn't come back, what well, that cancer come back? Can't worry about that. I can't dwell on it. But sometimes it gets paralyzing because Alice Trebek probably did it with his interview, said, expressed it better than I ever could because when I listened to it, it was like I was talking because I knew exactly what he was saying and what he went through was the same thing I went through and that's still going through. The depression will hit you out of nowhere. You will suddenly wake up and you feel like you just can't go on. It just is paralyzing. With the damage the chemo has done to me, I'm in constant pain. I'm on painkillers. I'm on Lyrica. It's not a pleasant way to live. Uh, don't get me wrong. I am glad to still be here because the one thing I had in my mind was that I was going to see my daughter graduate high school. That I was going to make it at least to that. I was determined. And now my next goal is to make it to my son's graduation from college. And then my next goal is to make it to my daughter's graduation from college. By then, I would have I will have made the five year mark where they consider it to be in complete remission. I still have three and a half years to go before that mark, but I'm on my way. And I intend to keep fighting every day despite the pain. I mean, it's a struggle for me just to get out of bed and walk the 20 feet to my bathroom. Uh, Kevin and Chris both know what I'm talking about because they suffer from it too. Kevin is in more shape than I am. At least I am able to walk and he struggles. And I admire him for that because he is my hero. He can be a pain in the ass. He can be straight to the point, which everybody says I am too because we both tell it like it is. Lord knows I've done that enough in my life. Um, so I keep him as an inspiration. If he can do it, I can do it. So every day I choose to make it one more day. I find a reason to keep going to make it through just one more day. And it's that way every day. And yes, that depression hits you. And you want to give up and just, you're tired of the pain. You're tired of feeling the way you do it. And you start to wonder, why am I still here? Why did I just not stop the treatment and let the cancer take me? 
suicide is a real problem with survivors because of that. And I can see it because there are days the pain is so unbearable that I can't. Um, the nerve damage causes what they call chemo-induced neuropathy. Uh, trying to explain that to someone is difficult unless they actually suffer from it. The best I can describe to you is that my hands or numb my fingers. I can't feel, I can't pick up the screw, I can't screw anything. This hand is like a stroke. My left side is worse than my right side. These two fingers I can't feel at all and I can't even straighten that one out. Barely can straighten the rest of them out. This hand I can do pretty good. My feet, I can't feel my feet as far as where I'm putting them, so I always walk like I'm drunk. But it's like you're constantly having pins, needles stuck into your hands and fingers and feet. When you walk, it's like walking on hot coals. I admire Kevin for putting up for a, with it as long as he has for six years. Yes, the medication helps, but not enough. And that's what people misunderstand. And what we've talked about in my cancer survivors group, our cancer group, is that people think that once you finish treatment and your cancer is remission, you're good. Hey, you're back to normal. And that is nowhere near the truth you are damaged for the rest of your life and it, it's just hard to explain to someone unless they've been through it and there's no point of reference i can use but i continue to fight because god has kept me here for a reason and despite the pain, it's just one more challenge I have to get through. I don't understand exactly why I'm here. Maybe this is the reason why. Me telling my story to help someone else. To motivate them to not give up. Because I was, I am, it's not in me to give up. I... <laughs> I'm a fighter. I've gotten my ass whooped several times, but I didn't give up. I didn't quit. And I, and that was me. It doesn't matter if I'm losing. I'm still fighting. I'm not quitting. And I don't intend to. Yes, this has been a rough weekend. And for personal reasons, I won't say why. But it's just one more challenge. It's just one more thing. God wants me to get through it. I'm going to do it. So, and I hope someone finds this video. And I hope it inspires someone to not give up. Because despite what you may think, there's a reason. People need you, if nothing else, but to inspire someone else to keep going. So, I think I've, good Lord, I don't even know how long I've talked. Didn't intend to talk this long. But, whew, it's still a journey. Every day is a new day. Every day I thank God I'm still here, I'm still breathing, I'm still moving. And I will continue for as long as he will let me. Um, God bless you all.